out is this Sunday, and let me just give you my predictions on this pay-per-view. Uh, I honestly don't care about this pay-per-view. I don't. There's a really only one match on the card that I care about, and that's Jazz Swagger versus Rusev. But let's let's go through the card lineup. Uh, let's see. For there's there's two Divas matches, but one is the kickoff match. Uh, it's Naomi versus Cameron because the Funko, they're splitting up the Funkodactyls. For a reason I don't know, so I'm just gonna say Naomi wins. They better have Naomi win. She's the she's the better wrestler. But yeah, that's the kickoff show, and it's Devil's Titles match. Uh, it's Paige versus AJ Lee. There's some people that have hype for this match. I don't because. There was no build whatsoever. AJ Lee just came back the night after the last pay-per-view, which was Money in the Bank, and she just beat Paige. And then the week, the the week, the build for this story has been weak, and I don't see, I don't really think this is going to be a good match. There's no build for it. So I'm not really expecting anything major. I'm just expecting AJ Lee to win. Which is probably gonna happen. Uh, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. Uh, this should be an entertaining match. It should be a good match. This actually had a decent build since Money in the Bank. These two have been fighting each other. Every time Seth tries to cash in Money in the Bank, Dean Ambrose is always there. Uh, coming on the outtake of this match, we're probably gonna see what's gonna happen at the end after the yeah at the end of the Fatal Four match because. Seth Rollins is probably the plan B. So I'm saying if, if Seth Rollins beat Ambrose to a point where he can't interfere when Rollins cashes in, who knows what may happen. But then again, we all know it's Cena versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. But it's a good thing that leaked promo didn't say it was for the title. So it could just be Cena versus Brock Lesnar with no title to take Cena out the title picture because the man has 15 title reigns. He's he's one away from tying Ric Flair and two away from beating him. But it just seems like the way this pay-per-view is built, and that's probably I'm just going to jump right into the main event. It seems like the way everything's been built, it seems like they're going to have Roman Reigns win just to have Seth cash in on him. But then again, Cena gets a rematch. And then again, SummerSlam is four weeks, well, four and a half weeks away after Battleground. But, you know, it's the WWE. They can do whatever they want because, technically speaking, Randy Orton never got his rematch. He got, well, he never got his one-on-one -on -one rematch. He got a free entry into the Money in the Bank ladder match for the World Heavyweight title. And he got free entry into this match. So Randy Orton got cheated out of his rematch. So who's to say they might not do the same to John Cena? Just have Brock Lesnar kick his ass. And then have a feud with that to distract him to get him out of the, the title picture for a year again. But yeah, I just I just have a feeling that Roman Reigns is going to win that. And then they just kind of have Seth cash in on Roman Reigns. Uh, Jericho versus Bryant. The build-up for this match has been okay. Ooh, they even updated uh, Chris Jericho's uh, pitcher. And they have him sucking his stomach in. Because his abs are not that defined. But yeah, they updated his pitcher because now they added the the two the wing thing tack to it here. And it's one of a mini half of arm sleeve. But yeah, this is going to be a good match. Jericho comes back to put over the mid-card talent. Which is expected. Jericho always loves doing this, and he likes wrestling people that he's met, wrestled, never wrestled before. Hell, the man's wrestled on NXT once. Will he ever see The Rock wrestle on NXT? Hell, the fuck no. So yeah, more respect to Chris Jericho. Um, the Usos versus the Wyatts. A two out of three falls match, and they're doing this match for the titles. I think for the third time, I believe. Um. So this should be an interesting interesting match as well. But like I said, they're running it to the ground. So hopefully out of this two out of three falls match, whoever wins, they'll find another tag team to go against. Because I don't like when WWE runs storylines into the ground. Like
like they were they were doing it with Cena versus Bray Wyatt. They were doing it with the Shield versus the Wyatts. They kept throwing it at us and they were eventually running it into the ground. And the match that I care about that it seems that WWE wants us to care about because the build for this has has just been perfect. Uh, Jack Swagger versus Rusev. This is the only match that I honestly care about. This is the only match that I don't want to see. Hopefully it's within the first hour so I can see it live before I go to work on Sunday. But yeah, this is this is the main watch I want to see. And hopefully Jack Swagger uh, defeats Rusev and breaks his undefeated streak. And also this is the first time that this is Jack Swagger's um, first one, first run as a face, which is also interesting if, if anybody's paying attention to that. But I'm not expecting anything out of this pay-per-view. And I could afford to not expect anything out of any pay-per-view. I'm only paying $10 a month. Thanks to the WWE Network, that is. That, that was the most, that's the brilliant thing that the WWE has ever come up with. So, yeah. I'm watching this for $10 a month. I'm forever going to have it. So, yeah. I'm really not expecting anything spectacular out of this pay-per-view. But that's, those are my predictions for this pay-per-view. And um, another news, CM Punk has been uh, moved to the alumni section and WWE. Uh, I say I give him one year to return to do anything wrestling related because he's in his mid-30s. And I highly doubt for a guy that's in his mid-30s, which is technically still young. Well, to me, that's still young. I don't see a guy in his mid-30s being done with the thing that he's been doing most of his life forever. So, you know, who knows how he'll come back. He may come, he may come back as a commentator. Hell, he may even come back as a referee. Who knows? But I just don't see him at the age, at the age I think he's 36, 37, 35. I'm not really sure. But I don't see him at that age being done with wrestling forever. So I'll say I'll give him a year or two tops till he comes back and does something, something wrestling or and that's going to wrap this up for this week's Drama Script Saturday. Remember, you can catch Drama Script Saturday every Saturday. And if you like what you witnessed, feel free to just subscribe. And if you want to ask me a question, my contacts are in the description box below. And I'm Game Fiend, Fiend of All Games, guys. And I'm signing out. Later, guys, and peace.